Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you could probably tell from the thumbnail, this is not one of my usual true crime videos, but I'm really excited to introduce to you Trials by Social Media. This is episode one of a five part series that I created alongside crime and investigation in which we unpack some of the biggest and most shocking cases and scandals that have played out online. Exploring the timelines, evidence and public comments, we see how social media was fundamental in the shaping of each story while also serving as a figurative judge and jury. In this first episode we delve into the tragic case of Nicola Bully and Crime and Investigation have very kindly allowed me to share this one with you guys on my channel but you can watch the other four episodes right now on the Crime and Investigation Play app with weekly releases onto the Crime and Investigation YouTube and Facebook channels from the 16th of June and I do have a discount code for Crime and Investigation Play to share with you. You can use the code CI play molly it will be on the screen to receive 50 percent off of any subscription to the crime and investigation play app the link to which will be in the description box below along with the t's and c's i had a really great time with crime and investigation creating this series it was something very very different for me but it was a really amazing experience so showing your support to the series would mean the absolute world to me so let us know your thoughts on trials by social media and without further ado let's get into the episode on the morning of the 27th of January 2023, Nicola Bully dropped her two young children to school, yet little did they know that this would be the last time they would see their mum again. Now we know that social media can be a very powerful tool, however there is always the risk during an investigation of misinformation and public speculation. Nicola Bully's case certainly set that precedent. Social media internationally went wild to the point that the police were urging the public not to take the law into their own hands and warn amateur detectives not to abuse witnesses or attempt to break into empty or derelict buildings or along the river wire. Let's look at what happened and the impact that social media had on this case. Nicola was 45 years old. She was born in Essex and eventually moved to Lancashire where she got married and had two daughters. She was a mortgage advisor and was well liked in the community. On the morning of the disappearance, after speaking to several parents at the school, Nicola left her car parked there and headed to the River Wire with the family dog, Willow. So we know that several witnesses encountered Nicola between 8.13 and 9.10. 8.43 a.m., Nicola walks along the path by the River Wire with her dog, Willow. At approximately 8.50 a.m., a known contact of Nicola, a fellow dog walker, sees her walking around the lower field with her dog. Their two dogs interact briefly before the witness leaves the field via the river path. 8.53 a.m., Nicola sends an email to her boss. At approximately 9 a.m., Nicola replies to a friend via text confirming a time to meet the following day. 9.01 a.m. Nicola logs into a Teams conference call. Her microphone and camera were turned off. At approximately 9.10 a.m., a witness who knows Nicola sees her on the upper field walking her dog Willow. This is corroborated by the police. At approximately 9.20 a.m., Nicola's mobile phone is digitally linked to the area next to a river bench. 9.30 a.m., the conference call ends but Nicola stays logged on. At approximately 9.35am, Nicola's mobile phone and Willow are found at the bench by another dog walker. Willow's harness and lead are found halfway between the bench and the river. At 11, Nicola is officially reported as missing to Lancashire Police. The following day, Lancashire Police launched a major missing persons operation, deploying drones, helicopters and search dogs. They are joined by Lancashire Fire and Rescue, the Bowland Pennine Mountain Rescue Team and the North West Underwater Search Team. Also, local people gather in the village hall and set off on their own search for Nicola. Around 100 people join in with the search. All hands are on deck. Throughout the investigation, police announced that they are speaking to a potential key witness about Nicola's disappearance. Detectives say that the witness is a man in his 70s who was in the area of the village of St. Michael's on wire when Bully was last seen. Next, a woman described by police as an apparent key witness comes forward. The force also warns the public against totally unacceptable speculation and abuse on social media. Please can the public continue to report only factual information that they have and not speculation as to what may have happened to Nicola. This is all taking its toll on the family. You are one of those stories that is very much talked about on social media at the moment. Does that upset you? It would be upsetting. 
if I let myself read it all. Don't get me wrong, I have seen some stuff. Most people have been amazing. You know, you always got, you're always going to get that 2% people that, for whatever reason, you know, say and, and do not very nice things. But I don't want to give any energy to that. Like, my energy is just finding Nikki. Lancashire Police said it received reports over the weekend of messages being sent to Wire Council members, so Wire Council have to remove councillors' contact information from its website, citing inappropriate emails and phone calls regarding Nicola's disappearance. Two people are arrested on suspicion of sending malicious communications over the disappearance of Nicola. So we're several days into the search and still no news. There are all sorts of assumptions, rumours and accusations flying around, and social media is completely out of control. The public discovered through an admission from the police that in the days leading up to her disappearance, Nicola had been struggling with alcohol and perimenopausal symptoms. Based on a number of specific vulnerabilities that we were made aware of, Nicola was graded as high risk. A quote taken from her inquest stated that her behaviour in the week before her death was back to normal, she had restarted her HRT therapy. This enraged social media, people all over were furious, women's rights activists made this point very apparent. Was it necessary to divulge such personal information to the public? Then there were accusations against the family, saying could her husband be involved? On the sixth day of Nicola's disappearance, her parents were quoted as saying, we think someone's got her. And let's not forget the TikTok sleuth Dan Duffy, who was banned for filming himself searching for Nicola and confronting a local resident, falsely accusing the innocent man of being a suspect. However, the police were convinced that she had not been taken, nor had there been any foul play. They were convinced that she had fallen into the river, despite them still not recovering a body. At a press conference on a week after Nicola's disappearance, Superintendent Riley from Lancashire Police says, Our main working hypothesis hypothesis is that Nicola has sadly fallen into the river. There is no third party or criminal involvement and this is not suspicious but the tragic case of a missing person. Police were urging people to refrain from indulging in commentary and conspiracy theories about Nicola's disappearance as speculation increased online. It's now been over two weeks since Nicola Bully went missing and Lancashire police are no closer to finding out what has happened to her. Instead, they choose to share with the media at a press conference that Bully was vulnerable and grade as a high-risk missing person the day she disappeared, owing to some significant issues with alcohol, meaning there was risk of her coming to serious harm. Then, on Sunday the 19th of February, after over three weeks of searching, police say a body is found after a tip-off by members of the public. Sadly, we are now, now able to confirm that yesterday we recovered Nicola Bully from the River Wire. Home Office pathologist Dr Alison Armour carried out a post-mortem on Nicola's body. Dr Armour found no signs of assault or third-party involvement, but did note several bruises on Nicola's arms and legs consistent with a fall. In June, an inquest heard that Bully's mobile phone and Fitbit watch data suggested that she entered the water at 9.22. The coroner concluded that Nicola's death was accidental and rules out suicide. An inquest into her death was held at Preston's County Hall, which which concluded the death was accidental as she fell into the river and suffered cold water shock. After the inquest, the family said, sadly, we feel the need to again raise and address the issue of social media. It's upsetting that we've continued to receive negative targeted messages and still witness wildly inaccurate speculation being shared over numerous platforms. We encourage people to look at the facts, the evidence which has been heard during the inquest and the conclusion reached by the coroner to ignore any amateur views and opinions and be mindful of the impact that words bring. To conclude, the reaction to Nicola's death clearly opened the floodgates with speculation, theories and conspiracies. Hopefully lessons can be learned from this trial by social media.